What's up, everybody? I'm Thomas J. Beleza, and welcome to another lesson of the right mindset. I feel like this is like a goodbye, but I'm, it's also a hello. Hey, how's it going? Uh, listen, today is going to be about, uh, if you don't know, unlocking creativity, mastering the art of coming up with book ideas. So today is really going to be about how to come up with book ideas or take an idea and make it work, how to brainstorm a little bit. Because are you struggling to find that spark of inspiration for your next book? Well, don't worry, because in today's lessons, we're going to dive. We're diving headfirst into the exciting realm of coming up with book ideas. Writing is a journey of creativity and discovery. And I'm here to guide you through a process that will help you uncover those hidden gems waiting to be discovered uh, uh, or transformed as well into a captivating story. But I also want to say, uh, this is something you should practice. The thing we're going to go over, just practice coming up with ideas. Even if like you're not working on a book idea, it's great for that. So let's get into it. Hey, hey. Hit the promo, hit the thing, hit the intro. I'm over here dancing to that music. Anyway, if you haven't already uh, and you've been here for a while and you haven't already or or you're new here and you love what you're watching, even though it's only been, what, two minutes, uh, please uh, subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss out. To, you know, let's get right into it. Brainstorming uh, for a strong foundation. Let's lay the groundwork for our book idea, shall we? We'll start by quickly brainstorming key elements that form the foundation of your story. Because we have to first, as a writer, figure out the ordinary world. What's the mundane, everyday life of your protagonist or protagonist uh, before their adventure begins? And once you establish that ordinary world, how do we mess it up? How do we throw some monkey wrenches in there? Or tiger wrenches, if a tiger which leads us to the inciting incident. Basically what unexpected event disrupts their ordinary world and sets the story in motion. And we'll go over these things uh, with examples. Uh, once you understand the inciting incident, right? You have to be working towards the midpoint conflict. So basically what significant challenge or twist turns the story on its head and propels the protagonist into the heart of the conflict. And of course, once the conflict happens, they need a resolution. That leads to uh, the end wh where the protagonist is transformed in the ending uh, or the conclusion of your book. Now, I just want to say creating a compelling story starts with building a solid foundation that captivates your readers from the very beginning. Now, honestly, I will say this much. When you're doing this exercise, it's not about specific details. It's all about general thoughts and general ideas. And then you kind of like hone those ideas and you, you can discover them through the outline and stuff like that. I, 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 I an aside, uh, I was watching a video on uh, the TikTok, and someone says that, how can you outline a story if you don't know the story? Because it's the, the plot of verse pants or thing like that, which, uh, by the way, I am both. I have done both. There is nothing wrong with either one of them if it's what you like doing. However, you can plot an outline because you can discover your story through the outline because the outline starts with just the general idea. And then you start kind of building on that general idea. You make sure each of the 27 plot points are established or whatever form of outlining you do. And you just create them, you know, uh, not just it takes a little work. But what is their ordinary world, right? You kind of work that out. A couple thoughts, ideas. They're from. A, they live on a farm. They live in a big city. They, uh, their mechanics. Uh, you know, uh, on Long Island, whatever. They are mechanics on Long Island, and they have dreams and aspirations of one day owning their own mechanic shop. Okay, so that's the ordinary world, but. That's so general and you can build on that, you know, and then uh, maybe you are building it. Maybe when you start kind of laying out specifics, you might go, uh, 
Uh, he's a mechanic who lives on Long Island, and one day his aspirations are to own his own place. But what if? But what if uh, he does own his own place? You know what? I, I kind of like that. He, all right, he's a mechanic who owns his own place, and his aspirations are actually to one day hand this off to either his uh, son or daughter. Uh, or he sort of just wants free time. He wants to get to the point where he doesn't have to be there anymore, and it's sort of like self-sufficient. So you can play with those things. And in fact, you could go to the inciting incident. You could be like, uh, someone dies and leaves him a lot of money. All right. Well, that makes the first example better. So he, he works at a shop. He has aspirations to own his own place. All right. Uh, he gets a lot of money. Or maybe uh, you take the first example and the inciting incident is uh, the car jack falls down and crushes his hand. Will he ever be able to work again? Right. That's the inciting incident. So you can play like making an outline. My aside to that TikTok is you can discover your story through outlining. Outlining is not writing out exactly what you know. You can, though. If you know it, you know it. But this exercise today is showing you that you can discover your story. And I'm, we're going to go over everything. But but the whole point of these uh, these four elements that you should really be paying attention to will help you link everything. So the first one is the ordinary world. The second is the inciting incident, then the midpoint conflict, and finally the resolution. So basically, how, where does your world, where does your story start? What changes your story? What is the big conflict that creates, uh, that reveals the truth of the lie? And then ultimately, how does it resolve? A, what is the battle to the resolution? And what does the end of your novel look like? All right. So one, figuring out your ordinary world, this is basically... Who are your characters? What's their daily lives? Their desires, right? And then two is the inciting incident. And this is really what ignites your story. What propels your story into motion? What gets you, your protagonist up and going? What changes their path? What challenges their ordinary world? Their original dreams and aspirations. For example, the hand is crushed. Now, will they ever be able to own a place themselves? Will they ever be able to work? They have to change job professions, right? Three, the, the midpoint conflict, there are two elements to this, okay? There's the rising ascension to the midpoint conflict, which is basically you're challenging everything that you set up in the, in the ordinary world in Act 1. Basically, what are they capable of doing and who are they? Then you challenge that on the rising ascension to the midpoint conflict. Then you have the midpoint conflict, which reveals the truth of the lie, which basically means... Whatever the protagonist believed to be true is not true. And it challenges them to the point where it pushes them to their limits and they aren't able to overcome that conflict, which is what the descending fall from the midpoint com conflict is about. It's about finding a solution that allows them to overcome the truth they learned about their lie. Okay. And then the ending. The ending, the climax, how do they transform as a character? What is, is there a moral story to it? And the thing is, as you brainstorm these elements, remember that the ordinary world, inciting incident, midpoint conflict, and ending are interconnected. They are puzzle pieces that contribute to a coherent and engaging story arc. If you know how it's going to end, you could work towards that ending. However, if you don't know how it ends, you take what you do know and you work to each particular beat. I'm in the ordinary world. I know what that is. How do I work towards an inciting incident? What is that inciting incident? Okay, I got it. All right. So between these two elements, what is the lie the character believes? They believe they will get better. Great. The lie is they believe their hand will get better. They will become a mechanic again. Then the midpoint conflict means that they learn that they're not. A certain, we, we have to amputate the hand. It's actually create, the gangrene is forming. We have to remove your hand. So what's the solution? And they got to find a solution to that. Maybe it's uh, they start teaching their son or daughter the ways of a mechanic, right? Or uh, or they end up become they you, they change their careers, but they become a manager of the mechanic world. Or maybe they have a great idea for car, you know, car design or car, you know, uh, functionality. And that leads them to the solution, which is the final battle. They have a meeting with somebody to become the manager or 
work in engineering, even though they don't have an engineering degree because of their 30 or 40 years being a mechanic, they, uh, they could go into that room and then sell their idea because people heard about their idea. And the final battle is them going in and pitching this story. So how does it end? Hopefully they got the job or they didn't get the job. But you know what happened? They bought the patent and said, we will pay you for the patent. We just don't want you working here. I just did that in two seconds. I had nothing written down. Okay. That's the power. And by the way, none of that has to be true. I could, I could change all of that. That's the br brilliance of uh, brainstorming. But the reason we do what I did, everything I did is about laying the groundwork in general, broad strokes, how the things play out. That's all story. Narr narrative is made up of plot and story. Plot is what needs to happen. Story is how it unfolds. Right now, when you're brainstorming an outline or ideas, it's all about plot. What are the broad strokes? We don't have to worry about the specific movement of the story and how it unfolds. But you got to keep in mind that brainstorming is a flexible and exploratory process. Feel free to let your creativity run wild and consider various possibilities for each element. Because once you have a strong... I look over here because... Uh, my videos there, you know how like there's actually a, a psychological um, term for that. I want to look at the camera because I love you people, but for some reason, because I have the red, my eyes are just anyway. But once you once you establish strong foundation, you can build upon it with rich characters, intricate plot twists, and immerse settings to create a unique and compelling story that captures the hearts and minds of your readers. All of that is story, but right now. We lay the foundation with plot, general broad stroke plots. <clears throat> Remember, there are no bad ideas, only unworked ones. So let's walk through an example in real time. You want to do it? Do you want to do it with me? Do you want to do it with me? Let's do it. Boom. Here we go. Boop. Hey. It goes. All right. We already kind of did the mechanic one. So let's think of something else. <clears throat> you want to do a romance, a thriller? I don't know. Let's do uh, a. Nah, 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 nah. All right. Let's do something. Woman wakes up in mental hospital after being uh, in a vegetable state for. for five years okay all right you know what let's change it around because we're, we're in kill bill territory uh let's see um woman appears unconscious uh in the middle of a forest um uh, okay, woman appears unconscious in the middle of a forest uh, as three hikers uh, come up, uh, uh, discover. So the way I would change this: three hikers uh, discover a woman unconscious in the middle of the forest. Okay. Uh, let's say, let's kind of add a little bit more in that. She is covered in blood, uh, and wearing a weird, and wearing weird old style clothing from the 1900s. Sorry about that. 1700s. <clears throat> All right, so that's a general broad statement or, or you know, situation. The ordinary world is that uh, we're going to set up that <clears throat> three hikers discover a woman, uh, discover a woman unconscious in the middle. So the reason this is still considered uh, ordinary world and not an inciting incident is because this is where we start. So this means uh, she wakes up unaware of what had happened. Um. She has to, uh, unaware of what happened. Uh, she is taken 
to the authorities uh, to figure out who she is. All right. <clears throat> now, I would say the inciting incident um, to make it interesting is... Uh, The police, uh, the detective, detective comes in and, uh, uh, detective comes in to speak with her and sees her through the window, uh, uh the one, uh, Can't see him, and he is shocked. The woman is wearing. The woman looks just like his grandmother. Oh, no, is uh, is is great, great grandmother, or or whatever you know is uh, uh looks like. <clears throat> A woman from a painting that has been in their family for generations since the 1700s. And that's the inciting incident. So, now, because I'm brainstorming, I just did something. So now it has to be from the detective's point of view. So, uh... Now we know. Oh, we just did a couple of things. Now, uh, yeah. uh, leaves his house. Um, says goodbye to his family, and heads to work. Or enters the office. Everyone likes him friendly and ready for a fun day as today marks his uh, promotion for a sol uh, for having the best solve uh, best case solving uh, percentage. Did I spell that right? Yeah. You spell all the words right? Let's see. Ooh, yeah, I did. All right. So we we uh we established that, right? But then uh, this would actually we could turn this into the inciting incident. So this becomes the inciting incident, right? So character identity, okay, daily life, they're a detective, uh See, originally I was going to make it about uh, the woman character that was unconscious. And it can still be. But the way uh, we can get to her is through this detective. So maybe there's two protagonists. Or maybe there's only one. We don't know yet. So the detective enters life. So character identity, daily life, desires, and, and uh, discontent. So we got it all here. He's about to get a promotion. He solves cases. Uh, fairly, He has a high success rate. Uh, everyone likes him. That's his world. Triggering event. Three hikers. She wakes up and they bring it to authorities. Initial reaction. The detective comes in to speak with her and sees her through the window. She can't see him. And he is shocked. The woman looks just like a woman from a painting that has been in his family for generations since. And so desire to act. The detective. Uh, oh, wait, sorry. The detective questions her. And she doesn't know anything or where she came from or where the blood is from. She is not wounded. All right. Uh, the detective, detective wants to know more about who this woman is. He asks her if. He knows the name. Name here. 
which is his, which is the last name, which is the name of the painter who did the painting. Okay. Which the detective this we're creating the lie that it, which the detective uh, believes is related to him, which the detective believes the painter of the painting is related to him. So the midpoint conflict will reveal that no, she's actually uh, the descendant. All right. So we have, there we go. Desire to act. We got all three. Now, the midpoint, con we're going to rise to the conflict. Okay. Let me take this out of here so you can see it better. <clears throat> okay. Doing this fairly quick. I'm just thinking off the top of my head. You know, no big deal. Oh, let me, uh, transformation. We, okay. All right. Midpoint conflict. Let's put this over here so we have more screen. Perfect. Midpoint conflict, rising tension, uh, impact on protagonists, shifts and goals, or, you know, reveals the lie. All right, so uh, let's see. We got There has to be a twist. All right, the twist has to be either. Oh, we can we can make it. Uh, the twist is that. She was sent to the future through a spell to rid her of being uh, in the, the city. She was killing people and bathing in their blood for her, to keep her youth. That's a crazy twist. Remember, you need a twist. Right. Okay. Uh, the detective doesn't know. Uh, oh, you know what you could do? You could do. Um, the detective discover. Oh, I gotta do this. Sam discovers this um, by doing research on the painting. All right. Okay. Uh. We also got a challenger. We got a challenger that he's capable of. Right now, we're seeing that he's capable and he's, he's able to discover information because he's good at his job, right? <clears throat> we're going to learn that this woman, this woman is ending, is going to end up being a serial killer from the 1700s and related to the detective that's a nice little twist boom feel free to take the idea i don't care all right um so uh what is the what's the impact on the uh detective he doesn't believe what he discovered because this is still he believes the lie that the painting is actually painted by his family member he doesn't believe what he discovered time travel magic and the truth of the painting isn't real. Magic is not real, which is sorcerer, sorcerers. Can't spell crap here. What the hell? That's not how you spell sorcerers. That's sorcerers. <laughs> Sir. Okay. Yeah. So it's not real. Time travel can happen. And he, the detective, asks his mother, who is old and going through um, dementia. You spell that right? Yeah. Dementia. Uh, about the painting. And the person in the painting. 
All right. We could also, if we want, right, because uh, we could, we can, uh, we can really push on this. Um, we can make it so. Hmm. You know what? For now, for now, we won't get too crazy. All right. So the shifts in the goal is that the detective. So the midpoint conflict is. Uh, he doesn't believe what he discovered, right? Because that's it's revealed, right? So the twist. This is the twist that kind of sets off the second act. Uh, the midpoint conflict is that he finds more stuff. He's like, none of this is real. This can't be real, right? So the detective decides, because he's going to find a solution, the detective decides to find a way to send uh, the woman back because if she is who is related to him, wouldn't that delete him from existence? No, it wouldn't, because quantum, th quantum theory, right? All right. Okay, but we can also, um, uh, all right. Let's see. Uh, no, it wouldn't, because quantum theory. However... This leads the detective into the world of magic and dark arts. <laughs> now we need another twist. We need another crazy twist. Turns out that the detective's mother, mother, his grandmother, was a head witch of a co covenant covenant I spell that right no I did not I did not it's all right remember all great writers have great editors don't ever let spelling deter you there's no reason for it we have spell check we have the internet Got editors, even great writers. Seriously, they they have trouble spelling. Anyway, turns out that the detective's mother's detectors detective's mother mother's mother his grandmother was a head was the head the head witch of a coven covenant, um, and. His mother tried to stop them, and uh, she ended up killing her own mother. But uh, the result left her suffering with dementia. I spelled that wrong. Spelled that wrong. I just spelled it right. That's the problem with spelling, right? Okay. All right. So that's the, that's the, because there's all, there's in the third act, right? Or going into the third act is like a twist and then a darker twist makes it all worse. Um, so what is the darker twist? Oh, here we go. Turns out that the woman from the 1700s was sent to, uh, kill the detective's mother to stop her from uh, uh, killing the grandmother. See, she didn't kill the grandmother. She sent her back in time to the 1700s. Uh...
and uh, this caused mass uprising that led to uh, the grandmother teaching the woman magic, etc. When she died, uh, found out that uh, well, you know what we could do? She didn't. She didn't kill the grandmother. She sent her back into. So that's a. Turns out that the woman from the seventeen hundreds was sent to collect a tomb, uh, a book that the mother has or hid, and to kill the detective's mother. Uh, for doing what she did to the grandmother. <laughs> See, she didn't kill the grandmother. She sent her back in time. And she thought she killed her. And this caused the mass uprising. Blah, blah, blah. When she died, she found out that there is a book in the future. That will help her maintain her youth and strength forever. Which uh, we also have to do. It turns out. Uh, could also add this. The woman finally remembers who she is. And that leads us into the second, the third act, right? Uh, and the resolution is what? What is the resolution? Say, uh, the detective has to save her, his mother from the woman. Uh, in doing so, the woman is defeated. Uh, and the detective's mother's uh, mental state is restored. Oh, that's the victory. Now we could have a little twist, though, right? You could have like a like a little a little twist at the end of the movie, right? Because this right turns out the woman's soul was shifted into the mother's body. Boom. All right. I don't know how long it took me to do that, but I feel like it wasn't that long. So much so, I'm going to take another drink real quick. Mm. But ultimately, I came up with a general statement uh, that had the character identity, daily life, desire, and disconnect in a very broad stroke. And then uh, I created the three beats, the trigger, the, the, uh, the inciting incident, the reaction to the inciting incident, and also uh, the world, the world has been disrupted. Right. And then the midpoint conflict, I basically did the leading up to the midpoint, the midpoint itself. Right. And then the reaction to the midpoint, basically, you know, and then, uh, then I did the same thing with this. So, this is the uh, the first the twist that makes everything crazy, and then this is the twist where it becomes the darkest, and then the resolution, the final battle. All right, and then uh, the twenty seventh plot point is actually how how it ends. Like after after the final battle, what, what is the world thereafter? Turns out the woman's soul was shifted into it. Okay, so I kind of added that little little. Uh, I didn't do the 27 plot points altogether, but I just did broad strokes on it. And there you go. There you go. All right. Boop. All right. Let's let's uh, let's go. We're on to the next thing. The la what is this? One of the last things. All right. So real quick. Who would benefit and why this method can help writers block? Hmm? Well, the power of this brainstorming method extends to both seasoned writers and those grappling with the frustration, uh, the frustrating grip of writer's block, right? So, one, seasoned writers 
even experienced writers can find themselves in need of fresh inspiration and structure. This brainstorming method offers a strategic approach to storytelling that seasoned writers can utilize to enhance their craft. It allows you to refine ideas, right? Guide you through the essential elements. It prevents overwhelming because you're just doing kind of general. You just, whatever comes out, you're just letting it go. You're just, you're just playing on words. Even if, uh, let's, there was a couple moments when I was working on that just now where I stopped for a second. I was like, ah, I don't know if I want to do that. All right. You know what? I, I was on it for too long in my mind. So I just moved on. And then as you see, I went back and I, I was able to add or adjust. And then as I got further down, I came up with an idea. But then when I kept going, I was like, wait a minute, that idea. I don't want to do that idea because I already said quantum, uh, quantum theory, right? Quantum, quantum mechanics. You can't can't change the can't change the future of the past, right? So I, which establishes the world, the rules of the world, right? You may not believe in that. You may believe in the back of this future theory, and that's okay. But for this world and this story, that was the rule set, because the argument of the quantum theory or the other thing is uh, is moot once we're adding magic, witches, and time travel. Okay, anyway. Um, the other thing is it helps with effective planning. We're just generalizing broad strokes. And then you can basically just start building on that whenever you want, leading up to each of these beats. So instead of diving into a project haphazardly, seasoned writers can use this method to streamline their planning phase with general broad strokes. It encourages a focused approach that maximizes the effective the uh, effective the, the effectiveness of the writing process. Two, this helps. Writers struggling with writer's block because writer's block can be a formidable obstacle. But this brainstorming method provides a lifeline for writers looking to overcome the creative drought. The structure allows you to think structurally. You're thinking in moments. Writer block, writer's block often arises from feeling lost or unsure where to go, where to start. Well, this method offers a structured framework that helps writers regain their footing. Keep in mind, you don't have to start at the ordinary world. You can start, oh, I have a great idea for an ending. I have a great idea for an inciting incident. In fact, as you saw, my ordinary world, I ended up realizing that it would work better as an inciting incident. And then I created an ordinary world that fit the inciting incident. Because our first ideas doesn't have to be the idea, well, I came up with this. This is the order I came up with. And therefore, that's what it must be. You as a writer, a great writer knows that you have to work something you're able to move it it's okay to manipulate and change things it does not have to stay as you wrote it the first way that will throw you into a pit of despair i i i i, I promise you but the other element of this for people who are having writer's block is that you're breaking down barriers you're creating a step-by-step -step, um uh nature to the method that breaks down the daunting task of storytelling. And then, of course, it sparks imagination. I mean, I just came up with this straight off the top of the bat. I came up with two. I came up with the uh, the mechanic with the hand crush and then this thing with the detective. Two different story types, too. This one is more of like a thriller, probably sipping on the horror. And the other one's probably more dramatic, more drama, you know, character driven. But the beauty of this method lies in its adaptability. It meets writers where they are, whether it meets writers where they are, whether they're seasoned authors seeking a fresh approach or individuals struggling with writer's block, struggling with writer's block. By guiding writers through the key elements of storytelling, it fosters a sense of accomplishment, reigniting that passion. Remember, writer's block is a temporary hurdle. It doesn't define your abilities as a writer. Every writer no matter how experienced faces challenges in the creative process and the key to find strategies that work for you and this brainstorming method is about trying things creating versatile tools that has the potential to transform writer's block into writer's breakthrough so as you embark on your writing journey keep in mind that creativity is a muscle that needs exercise this method provides the exercise uh, needed to uh, move your brain. Okay. It's a pathway out of stagnation and into the realm of possibility. So whether you're a seasoned writer or not, try it. Doesn't hurt to try things. 
Your journey as a writer is about growth, exploration, and embracing the challenges that make you a stronger, more resilient creator. Final thoughts. As you stand at the intersection of inspiration and hesitation, remember that greatness isn't a swift accomplishment. It's a journey woven through time. Writing isn't merely about reaching a destination. It's about savoring every step to take along the path. In those moments when writer's block casts the shadow, don't let it define your narrative. Instead, view it as a challenge that propels you forward. Writing, like any art, requires practice, patience, and resilience. The tools we've delved into today are your allies, offering you the means to navigate the labyrinth of creativity. So embrace each twist in the road, each unexpected turn, and each blank page as an opportunity to craft something extraordinary. Your ideas are precious gems waiting to be unearthed and polished into brilliance. Polished into brilliance. Your words have the astonishing ability to spark thoughts and stir emotions in others because you are a creative author. So, my fellow creators, keep your creative gears turning. The blank canvas before you is your playground of potential. Let nothing, no matter how daunting, stand between you and the sheer joy of crafting tales and worlds. Okay. Basically, with every word you write, you're honing your craft, painting vivid landscapes of imagination, and creating something uniquely yours. <laughs> All I have to say is, write with purpose, write with passion, write with the knowledge that your words have the power to shape worlds, provoking thoughts, and touching hearts. So let your stories flow from your soul and let your voice resound across the pages. The next video in this series will focus on writing an effective book ending, crafting lasting impressions. <laughs> We're going to go over how to uncover the secrets of creating powerful conclusions that leave a lasting impact on readers. Discover why a strong ending is pivotal, how to tie up loose ends, and the influence it holds over the reader's experience. Question. What's the most challenging aspect? What is the most challenging aspect of coming up with a book idea for you? Is it the initial spark of inspiration or perhaps shaping the idea into a coherent plot? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like what you have watched and you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you don't miss out. All right, that's it. As always, keep developing the right mindset. I'll see you next time. Bye.